Hi, I'm Mario Vitale and we are at Casa Mono, the house of monkey, just off of Union Square and Gramercy Park on 17th and Irving on the east side of Manhattan. Hi, I'm Andy Nesser and we are at Casa Mono. The dish that we made today was the duck egg with mojama, but it's very much more than that. In Spain, on my father's 40th birthday, we were up in Deja, so we got into this hotel. This woman came up to us and said, look, I don't have a lot to serve you for dinner. However, you know, here it was, potatoes with a fried egg on top, and it was the most delicious meal I ever had. The key, the true success of the recipe, is in finding the best egg and the best potato and the best mojama. It's not only about technique, it's as much about the passion of the sourcing for these unique and super high level ingredients. So the duck egg is obviously the sunny side egg that you see here. The duck eggs come from the green market, but where do they come from when they get to the green market? They come from a goat milk farm. Hi, I'm Lynn. Welcome to Lynn Haven. We really don't want to hatch more ducks. They hide them in the, um, in the houses, they bury them under the hay because they don't really want us to get them. We get about 30, maybe 35 a day. They're my life. You know, you can, that's like what I do. It's all I do. They taste different because they're fresh. The egg yolks are bright orange. Our potatoes come from Rick Bishop, who grows these Nicola potatoes in uh, Roscoe, New York. So I'm taking the potato, cooking it once, cooling it down, slicing it, keeping the skin on, so you have that bitterness with the sweet waxiness inside. The origin of this dish is uh, a truffle and egg dish, but we want to bring it to Spain, so we, we anchored it with the mojama here, which is the dried tuna loin. And then, of course, we put the black truffle vinaigrette on top. I think more and more customers are very, very concerned about where their food comes from. We want to be as good as we possibly can, but we're still a restaurant, so it becomes very difficult to just source one thing from a local farmer. But by all means, that's uh, our first step. It's the relationship that we can have with the actual producer. And that's where food becomes less anonymous. It becomes something that is truly a representation of a collaboration, whether it's with the farmer and the buyer or the chef and the customer really creates something that's a unique dining, gastronomic, and intellectual experience all at once that can be just perceived as simply as, wow, that's really delicious, I'm leaving. <laughs>